We've recently taken a look at a forgotten classic, Clock Tower The First Fear, for the original PlayStation. A game that takes huge inspiration from classic 80s slasher films and turned it into a point-and-click survival horror game. Well today, we will now be looking at its younger sibling, Clock Tower. Not to be confused with the SNES game of the same name, this Clock Tower game which I'll now be calling Clock Tower 96 is actually a direct sequel to The First Fear. Since the original game was never released outside of Japan, it was decided to completely remove the two in the title for its American release, to avoid confusion, well, until the internet happened. Clock Tower 96 takes place a year after the events of the first game, and we now follow the story of five different characters. This Jennifer Simpson, the survivor of the first game. Helen Maxwell, Jennifer's guardian. Stan Goss, the detective. Nolan Campbell, Jennifer's creepy old love interest, and Samuel Barton. And you must help them uncover the secrets of Scissor Man and finally end his reign of terror. The game is separated into two campaigns, similar to the first Resident Evil game. While both scenarios doesn't really intertwine, canonically both of them happened. But instead of choosing the characters on a selection screen, you'll get to choose them depending on your actions in the prologue. The gameplay for the most part remains unchanged from its predecessor. It's still a point and click game but instead of exploring a 2D plane, you'll not be going around these 3D environments. You must examine every single thing in the room and you must examine them twice to fully know all of the details. And sometimes some items can only be triggered by examining other items which can feel a bit of a trial and error. And you'll also be presented with two choices in the game. And these choices will determine which character you'll control and the places you'll explore next. Unlike the first game where Scissor Man can only appear if you inspected an item, in this sequel Scissor Man can appear whenever he wants to. And to balance this frequent encounter with Scissor Man, there are more hiding places and items that you can use to defend yourself. In the first game, some of the defensive items were more of a death trap that leads to game over screen. But in this game, these items actually have a purpose and is even more useful than the panic button. When Scissor Man is near, you'll hear his chase music slowly fading in that'll surely send shivers down your spine. And if it gets close to the room that you're in, you could even hear his giant pair of scissors snipping outside. All of these changes and additions to Scissor Man really makes the game feel more real for some reason. And it gives Scissor Man more of a presence and not just an obstacle standing in your way like the first game. Though instead of exploring a one gigantic mansion like the first game, Clock Tower 96 takes place in different locations. And like mentioned earlier, it could even change depending on the decisions that you've made. These exploration segments are pretty short and they can be finished in less than 10 minutes, besides the finale. The goal is basically just to pick up an item and then escape from Scissor Man. It feels very arcadey but at the same time it fixes the kind of slow pacing of the first game, so in a way it's a plus. But in between the segments are intermissions, where you go to different places and talk to other characters. This part really gives the game a more movie feel with its huge emphasis on story and character interactions. Even the set of rooms that you explore looks like a small movie studio. In here, you'll spend most of your time reading all of the dialogue text while constantly spamming the X button, while listening to the maddening background noises played on loop, or even worse, the deafening silence. The voice actings are very few and far between, and when a scene is voice acted, well then be ready to hear the worst voice acting in video games of all time. Beth, are you alright? Yo, Teach. Oh, you're alive. Hey, what do you mean by that? I'm not even exactly sure if it's a real voice acting. Helen just sounds like a robot, and oh god. God, don't even get me started on the long pauses of each sentence. It takes about 5 seconds for them to reply back. It's so painful. But horrible voice acting aside, if Clock Tower 96 was released today or ever gets a remake, then I'm pretty sure it will play similarly to Heavy Rain or Until Dawn. This game is way ahead of its time.
gone to the dark yet colorful hallways of the original's mansion and replaced with early PS1 3D graphics. The original game still holds up pretty well even after 26 years. Too bad I can't say the same for this sequel. The locations that you visit are pretty dull and lifeless. Even the mansion finale, it just doesn't have the same atmosphere as the first game. The one thing that still holds up today is its characters' animations. The animations look so fluid and impressive for its time, and not to mention the extra details of the game, where the characters, specifically Jennifer and Helen, would change their clothes each scenario. It's such a small detail but I appreciate it. There are even more endings to unlock this time. Both Jennifer and Helen has 5 different endings and each of them are unique to each other. But my main problem with this game is that it's very rough and playing this game for more than twice can easily drive a person insane. I mean it's almost impossible to finish the game without looking at a guide. It took me 8 playthroughs to unlock the best ending and I only managed to do so with the help of a guide. My first 4 playthroughs were just wasted on me walking around the mansion, having no idea that I was actually stuck. The game just feels so random at times. There would be times where some side characters would just die and none of it is in your control. And it could even be possible to not have Scissor Man appear in a scenario at all. I mean, it did happen to me and he never appeared once. It's so anticlimactic. And what is up with this game and its obsession with having all of these characters be some kind of nuns? Yes. All of them, even Kai, Edward's guardian. I can't even describe this so I guess I'll just show it. One of the character's motives for killing is that he wanted to own Jennifer all to himself. I mean come on, is Jennifer some kind of a creep magnet? Not only is she being pursued by a slasher but also by a nuns? Talk about Mary Sue. Hell, even Nolan and Jennifer's relationship is even more scarier than Scissor Man himself. Was this necessary to the plot? Not at all, but somehow they had to make it official. This sequel to the underrated classic was very interesting. It was pretty clear that Hifumi Kono, the game's director, wanted to improve from the original game. But some of these changes ended up being a hit or miss, such as the Jalo tone being completely absent, heavy reliance on dialogue, random encounters, and more. But sadly, it looks like the sequel slash spin-off, The Struggle Within, completely strayed away from its slasher roots and taking a completely different direction that involves split personalities and zombies that ultimately killed the franchise. The Clock Tower series was one of the only few survival horror games that tried to satisfy people's craving for slasher games. And it's sad to see it die like this. And it would take almost two decades for us to get another proper slasher game in the form of multiplayer games. 